Welcome to the series of simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank. This one is part 8. Fitting the boiler to the locomotive chassis. The image on screen shows the boiler fitted to the chassis and part of the superstructure in place. So thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. If only life was that simple. Just behind the cylinders at the front of the chassis are a couple of oil boxes. And these are worse than useless. So here I'm removing them. The idea of these oil boxes is that you fill them with oil and then the oil runs down three pipes at each side to the three axle boxes. In theory it's a good idea. In practice it's absolutely hopeless. Lubricating oil, just like water and electricity, will always follow the path of least resistance. And in this case the path of least resistance are the two very short pipes that feed oil to the front axle boxes, which means that 90% of the oil lubricates the front axle box. There are no wicks in these small pipes. Possibly putting wicks in there would make it so it slowed down the oil flow to the front axle boxes. Examining the mechanical aspect of this locomotive, this has been quite successful on the front axle box, but there's quite a lot of play in the middle and rear axle boxes, and I'll be doing something about that in due course. This part is the ash pan, and the first thing I'm doing is removing this flap that's been riveted on there. I think I know why this has happened. Many years ago I had a simplex locomotive, and this used to burn out its grate, and at first I too modified the ash pan. I did find that modifying the ash pan in a very similar way to this was ineffective. All you really have to do is increase the diameter of the blast pipe in the smoke box. What actually draws the fire on a steam locomotive is the blast of the cylinder exhaust going up the chimney. And it's not the volume of steam going up the chimney, it's the speed. So if your blast pipe is too small, this high speed jet of steam going up the chimney draws the fire a little too well. And I found, generally, that in the centre of the grate was the hottest point, and the fire was always white hot on the simplex that I used to run. All you have to do is unscrew the blast nozzle and drill it out a bit. As usual, I got very obsessive with this. Removing the blast nozzle, drilling it out one imperial size at a time, until it became a bit more stable. And when I got it right, the fire grate didn't melt. When I first tried to fit this boiler into the frames, very early on, before I even started making the video, it wouldn't fit in the frames. The two blow-down bushes were sticking out a little bit too far. And to be honest, they weren't sticking out hardly at all, but just enough to make it so the boiler would not fit in the frames. A simple and gentle solution was to use my Proxon angle grinder fitted with its flapper wheel to very gently remove the excess part of the flange. And now the boiler fits in the frames, but the ash pan is wrong. Even though this ash pan fitted the previous boiler, it's not looking too good on this one. When I fitted the ash pan into the frames by using the dump pin to hold it in place, this lifted the position of the boiler far too high in the frames, and the two blow-down outlets were nowhere near where they were supposed to be, because the boiler was about half an inch too high. There is another problem also, the grate does not fit into the boiler's firebox. It's not even close, but do bear in mind that this is a simplex boiler and the other boiler was a super simplex boiler, maybe this slightly bigger, I don't know. I trimmed the piece of stainless steel grate using my bandsaw, making sure when cutting it that I had positive pressure against the bandsaw blade at all times. If the stainless steel grate that you're cutting work hardens, even if your bandsaw blade is a new one, you can say goodbye to it because the stainless steel will just blunt it. Around the area of the firebox and the grate, everything needs to be a loose fit. If you try and be too clever and make everything a perfect fit, you'll run into trouble. This clip shows the ash pan sat in the frames held by the dump pin. And by the way, just in case you don't know, the dump pin holds the ash pan in place underneath the boiler, but if you want to drop the fire, you just pull it out. The ash pan in this case is made of silver soldered brass and I've also trimmed that down using the bandsaw. At this moment in time it is not 100% right so I'll trim it again and see what happens. If I spoil it I'll use it as a template to make a new one. Besides this ash pan is not really built as per the drawing at all. 
but to start with I'll see how it goes. Now I've trimmed both of the bushes, and I think I'd better use the correct terminology. Now that I've trimmed both of the blow-down bushes on the boiler, it fits in the frames. And this image shows the left-hand side blow-down bush, which is more or less in the right position. Normally you have a bracket silver soldered to the boiler, which sits on top of the frames and holds the boiler in the correct position. But I don't have that luxury with this boiler, and I'm certainly not going to drill each side of the boiler to fit these brackets which are commonly known as expansion brackets. I'm going to use a different method, and I'll show it in a future video. I've temporarily put a fitting in the hole in the side of the boiler, not very far in because it's not the right thread. I just wanted to illustrate that there really isn't very much room for a blowdown valve because if it's too long it will foul the coupling rod. Now for something completely different, this is the pressure gauge, it's very dirty and very grubby, pretty much like the rest of the engine, but after wiping it with a cloth soaked in white spirit it's looking a lot better. As you can see this originally came from a company called Bruce Engineering, who used to be the main agent for Stuart Models. In the box I found a couple of safety valves. These are not the type that I normally use, these are not Jubilee fittings ones. And at this stage I can't decide whether to use this type, these are the wrong size but you get the idea, these are called express safety valves. Because they're like the type that used to be fitted to express steam locomotives. Whereas these are the type that are shown on the simplex drawing. If you've been watching this series, you'll all be aware by now that this is a simplex locomotive made to look like a prairie tank. And I use the term look like loosely, because on a prairie tank the safety valve is in the centre with a top feed as it's a Great Western Railway engine. And also I don't know if you've noticed but a simplex does have external valve gear whereas a Great Western locomotive generally speaking has internal valve gear with some exceptions. And a prairie tank definitely has inside valve gear. Time to get ready, I think, to make a new inner steam dome. I'm not going to use this at all, it's diabolical. In this clip, I'm only using it to illustrate the fact that the centre pipe is far too long. I need to remove the pipe, take it over to the bandsaw and shorten it. I think I'll take half an inch off it. So without further ado, I'm unscrewing the pipe, which isn't tight into the regulator tube anyway. After this, I shortened it on the bandsaw, then I put it in the lathe to clean up the top, and in this clip, I'm applying some Loctite 542 to the thread, and screwing it permanently in place to the regulator tube. And yes, I know I'm using a pair of pliers without jaw protectors, but it's not marked it much more than it was marked in the first place. Even before the Loctite 542 has set, it feels very solid. Now I need to get ready and take some measurements so I can machine a new inner dome. Here's my kit of parts including the steel dome bush template. And also visible in this clip is the new inner steam dome casting. I bought this from Blackgates Engineering because they supply all simplex parts. In the next episode I will be machining and fitting the new inner dome. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.